You are listening to the Porch Ideas Network with your hosts, Mary and Dave Morris, creators of PorchIdeas.com. Dave and I are very excited about the guest that we have today, Bradley Johns, who is the founder of Ready Dex Franchise Systems out of West Monroe, Louisiana. Bradley founded Ready Dex in 2001, and they have built over 9,000 decks and porches company wide, which is absolutely amazing. And they have a total sales volume of over, over $4 million, which is very impressive. So, Brad, you know how to build decks and porches. I, I would like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's yeah. great. We have a lot of people who visit our site who are interested in uh, porches for their mobile homes. So this is going to be very interesting for us to learn more. So Brad, if you could start out and just tell us a little bit about ReadyDex. Uh, what is your company about and what do you do? Okay, so ReadyDex, uh, my original concept for ReadyDex was uh, to make uh, Dex and porches affordable for the average working class, and which I think we've been successful at doing. I created a system for building decks. So basically we have a product instead of each deck being its own particular special thing, uh, we go out and build by process, just as you would in a factory. Uh, it's like you might buy a factory built home or a, a spec home in a subdivision. We come out, we build, you know, an hour is what it takes most uh, contractors or do-it-yourselfers days to do. Therefore, we're able to do it at a much more affordable cost, generally speaking, while still providing you know, a good quality product with a predictable outcome and a predictable price. So the materials that you take to the uh, mobile homeowners, is there anything that's already pre-constructed or is it just that you have a plan in place when you get there? No, we just we have a we have a standard building system. We have a few tools that are patented that allows us to work so efficiently. So everything is built on site. No, that's great. And you also do more than just decks and porches. You, could you name a few of the other things that? Uh, yeah. Well, be? so we yeah we build wheelchair ramps. You know, any kind of a disabled access. We do, of course, gable porches. We have a signature post and beam gable porch that has features tongue and groove roof decking and a, a wagon wheel pattern in the gable or other designs. We've even done crosses. We also do a lot of screen porches, uh, just tons and tons of screen porches. Naturally, down in the south, you know, we have no shortage of mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we build hip roof porches like standalone, we call them uh, outdoor ready rooms. And they're standalone, typically hip roofs down in the Houston market mm -hmm. where we have a lot of slab homes. There's, you can't really come off the back of a house for the day. And they'll have a little patio already. So we'll build this sitting out by itself, and, and we may come back and turn it into an outdoor kitchen, or they'll just take, you know, the customer will take it and put their furniture out there. We may come back and screen it in. Really, about anything exterior would. Well, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, Dave. I was gonna. Yeah, I was just gonna say, if you know, I'm a mobile homeowner. What are what are the main things I need to know if I want a porch added on to my mobile home? Building the porch on a, on a manufactured home versus a site-built home is really not a lot of difference for us. Uh, we, we never, we never uh, attach, use the existing structure to support our deck. Everything we build is self-supporting. But on a manufactured home, you definitely want to make sure that you're not supporting with the home. You may or may not know what's behind the siding and to get there, just you know, especially if it's a new one, you could void the warranty if you start tearing siding off and trying to attach the deck to the to the home. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the first thing, you want to build a self-supporting structure. You can attach the structure to the home so that there's no independent movements between the two to allow for proper flashing or roof connections. But you don't want to support. You don't want any weight hanging onto that manufactured home. Okay, and then yeah, I was interested to see. I know uh, on your site you have some great, great pictures and things on your on your website, which we'll let everybody know about here at the end. But I was noticing the piers. Uh, how do you do the, the piers? Do you have a system for that? So, like your your, your footing. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, your footing. Yeah, we use a uh, we use a, a manufactured deck pad, and so the same company that makes these pads makes 
uh, pads for manufactured homes as well as pier and beam homes. Now, unless you're in an area where there's a potential for erosion or there's a frost line, which currently our, our locations do not deal with any frost lines, uh, setting a, a pad essentially on top of the ground, you degrass it and you know, if there's any soft, really soft sod or what, if you want to remove that and get down to something a little more substantial, we just use this pad. In the situation that there's a there's a, an incline, a hill, or a grade that, that may be potential for erosion, we would definitely want to do a, you know, one and a half to three foot footing, okay. still using that pad at the bottom to give you a, a good base. Yeah, those pads make it really easy to construct, really quick to put uh, put a structure up, I'm sure. Well, I, it helps, and, and essentially, if you're in the south like we are, you don't have a frost line to worry with. You can dig, especially in Louisiana, you, you can dig three or four foot. You're no better off than you are right on top of the ground as far as any kind of settling. Now, if you're on the coast, you may have some wind uplift issues. We use anchors down there to, to anchor the porches down. Can you tell us a little bit, Brad, about what kind of porch skirting options that you might offer? Working in our in our standard building products, we offer wood skirting, which is one by six treated boards, just vertical. That's a standard skirting option. Of course, we can do vinyl skirting. A lot of manufacturing homes have existing vinyl skirting. However, it's not uncommon anymore for us to skirt the entire home with the one by six treated wood along with our porch it really gives it a nice solid appearance and, and closes in that that bottom hiding all the the ugliness of the post and blocks uh, underneath the home oh and i bet it makes it look makes it feel like the porch is much more part of the home absolutely we had talked before i think before or we i saw it on your site too about the you know some design factors about you know placement of the when a Homer is trying to figure out the design that works best is taking account in where their front door is and where the porch steps are, you know, in relationship to that, those kinds of things. Can you advise some of the mobile homeowners about when they're thinking about that, some of the considerations they should apply? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, so our, I think, I think any, you know, uh, what's the saying that, that people, it's a proven fact that people find symmetry to be beautiful. A person's face is symmetrical or a building. So our natural thought for someone is to center a deck on the or a porch deck on the on the door and center the steps. That looks nice and balanced. However, so does one setting to one side with the steps to one side it can actually add a little more interest to an often boring manufactured home. So from a use standpoint. Placement of your of your de of your deck and your steps is extremely important in maximizing the usable room. For example, you have a walk path up your stairs into your door, and that was that. This is a natural path. If you center your deck and your steps, you're going to cut that deck completely in half. So you can figure a four foot swath down the middle of that deck. If you have a 16 foot wide deck, you just reduced it to six foot on one side and six foot on the other. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you take that same 16 foot wide deck, and say you're facing the home, and, and you position the deck a foot past the door on the right side, throwing everything else to the left. And if you can put those steps on the left side of the deck or porch, now you walk up and you may take out six foot of that corner, and, and, and there you are left with a good 12, 13 foot to the other side of all usable space. Yeah, that becomes, uh, yeah, really important. Because, you know, we've seen porches where it's split down the middle and you really can't use your porch like you like you thought you could. I mean, right, it's kind of, like, kind of like you'd have two small little area. sections instead of one larger outdoor space yeah. for your we furniture. See when we, we're going to roll out a new website in about three months. And fortunately, we don't have the, you know, the, the ability to do what I want, which is a drag and drop design feature. But we are going to have some questions and some check boxes. And, it's things to consider like an average four or five piece patio set. I've went out and physically measured and, and you know, while well, people are using them and they take up roughly an eight foot by eight foot area. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go throw that on one end, you, you know, you, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and start to figure out how much room you need by what you're planning to do with the, with the porch. So yes. awesome if you can think through those details before you figure out what size to make your porch yeah. and what layout balance of what you needed what, what your needs are and your budget 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You also do, uh, you know, accessibility. We talked a little bit. You mentioned about ramps before. Can you go through some of the considerations people should take into account uh, if they need a ramp? Okay. So if someone needs a ramp. Uh, I would say about half of the time for us, it's a it's an older person that has a little trouble getting around. They may have uh, a, a personal scooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can still walk good, but they really can use this thing a lot better. And depending on those capabilities, it depends on the pitch of the ramp. However, if they're in a in a chair, if it's a power chair, again, they can take a steeper ramp. Uh, if they're in a push chair, you need to go to code. Code is for every inch off of the ground, you need one foot of ramp. So you would start by checking the distance from your threshold of your door to the ground. And then, you, of course, you want to design your porch, like how it's going to sit. And then where do you want the end of this ramp to be? Often people are trying to get as close to their van, typically a van, as they can, you know, so there's not, if there's gravel, you don't have concrete, what have you, you don't want to go over a lot of rough terrain. And so you're trying to get from, from your vehicle or, or your concrete to the ramp and then up the deck. So in doing this, you may be going uphill. If the ground has a grade, and it's going uphill, then you need to actually pull an elevation from your threshold to where your ramp you want it to end. And then that's where you would check your, your height. Say if you have oh. 30 inches, you need 30 foot of ramp. That would be code. Mm -hmm. That's quite a bit of ramp. It sounds like a lot. You know, and that's the first thing that people say. Wow, that's, you know, you might <laughs> say, hey, that's, you need 40 foot of ramp. You say, wow, that's a lot. Well, yeah, if you do a straight ramp, that is a lot. After mm -hmm. 28 feet, you need, again, federal code, ADA guidelines says after 28 feet, you have to have a four foot resting area, which makes sense, yeah. you know. Uh, but oftentimes, if you get into a ramp that's 30 foot long, you're going to end up doing a, an L shape or you're going to end up doing a, a, what we call a switchback, where you mm -hmm. go down, you know, usually halfway, and you make a turn around and, and go back. Another thing to keep in mind, and, and I, I bring up code, a lot of, a lot, I know a lot of uh, do-it-yourselfers and build, and even builders, like just handymen, kind of resist uh, code. Uh, but when it comes to ramps, I've been working with, with disabled persons for over 13 years, and I learned real quick to not complain about the code, saying exceed them. You need a five by five landing at the door, for example. I've seen people with a screen door in a chair try to get out of their door on a five by five landing and shut that screen door behind them. It is practically impossible. For this reason, uh, if we do a job for the state where they only pay for a five by five, I give them a six by six. Oh, that's great. Because they need it. And when you get down, if you make a 90 degree turn, again, you need a five by five landing. And that does work well because you don't have a door to continue. If you do a switchback, you would think, well, I'm building a four foot wide ramp, I'll build a four foot by eight foot switchback. It's wrong, you need a five by 10. Hmm. So building, you know, taking, take, definitely taking the time, getting some elevations where you want to end, where your ramp you want it to end, how high you are, the capabilities, if you have a power chair or a scooter, the, the capabilities, you know, staying within a safe range, I'm sure there's some there's some guidelines that these scooters will tell you what type of grade you can go on. You don't want to exceed that. Yeah, we know from uh, I know from experience uh, with the accessibility issues that uh, all you have to do is you're talking about the space it takes to turn is just get in one and mark off a five by five foot area, sit in a wheelchair, and try to turn around. You soon learn that that's that's pretty tight. Yeah. So that's really that's really good information. That is so, very, that's good. very good. Information, that's very good so. to know. One of our favorites, of course, is, spring, uh, is screen porches, and I know you talked a little bit about that, that you build a lot mm -hmm. of those. So uh, any tips, ideas for, for screen porches on mobile home? So on a screen porch, like, you know, it's basic layout as a standard porch, maximizing the room on it. We use a product called ScreenEase, which allows yeah. you to, if you frame properly, you can do up to 16-foot spans. We don't quite go that far. We just don't want any problems in the future, but you can do 12 foot pretty safely, probably framed. So, you know, again, layout of doors, you know, instead of putting a door center of the porch, you know, kind of work a door off of an existing post that makes it, uh, well, it's a little easier construction, but it also kind of hides that door and it's not just hanging out there in the middle. Mm -hmm. You have a really, you might go all out by a really, uh, 
nicely detailed door or something like that that you want to show off in that situation, you know, placement. Screen porches on a manufactured home, again, not a lot different than a conventional site built home. There's, you got overhang to contend with. There'll be some areas where you want to just block in rather than try to make small screen areas. Do you offer any different kinds of flooring options on either your um, open porches or your screen porches? We offer a tongue and groove decking board like you would have on, on your much older homes how they used to. Now mm -hmm. we usually use a five inch tongue and groove board rather than like your really old front porch or your classic you know, tongue and groove front porch. What, yeah, two inches, two and a half inches yeah, wide. Yeah, pretty, pretty narrow. Yeah. We do those. However, we find that screening the joist before we put our decking boards on is the best thing to do. Oh. It allows you a little more airflow. The dirt will fall on through and you can wash it out. And if you, with a deck board, you know, occasionally you're going to have one that cracks or splits or does something funny hmm. and you can simply replace it. If you use tongue and groove, you have to, you have, your only option is to really take a saw and cut that board out of there. Which is quite a quite a, a chore, and then of course it never looks quite right when you put it back. Put it back, yeah. So this reason we we discourage the use of tummy groove. If you had if you had you know access to some really nice cedar and you wanted to take extra time, you know, and care to make put your tummy groove down, well that would be nice. But mm -hmm. for us, you know, we 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 build a lot of volume, so we have to try to use a product that's going to last, and if there's a potential for problem, to be easily replaced. If you, if you bought a car, I think a Rolls-Royce used to weld their hood shut and say, hey, we built the best car, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all fine and dandy, but, but, you know, your Fords and Chevys, you can access under the hood and you can change parts. Well, used to pretty easy. Yeah, used to. <laughs> I saw that you have an option on your website where if an interested mobile or, modu or manufactured homeowner would like to see what a porch would look like on their on their home that they could send you a photograph of their home and then you could superimpose a porch design over it. And I was wondering, Brad, if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Sure, it's, this is an app that we had built specifically for, for our customers and for use within the franchise. So a person can send us a pic, they go take a, a couple of photos of their home with their, with their smartphone or camera send them to us or if we're on their site we'll take a picture and we can put a deck a single pitch porch or our signature post to being gable porch on their home of various size we can locate it you know and wherever they want and go back and forth to and it's it's really nice the the, the renderings are good they're authentic to ready decks so there's pretty much no questions asked Just say no questions as no surprises yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great, yeah, that's a great service to be able to offer to folks. That really is. Do yeah. you do you charge for that service? Well, for our customers, we don't. Yeah. Absolutely not. Okay. Now, what we do because our, our products are pre-priced. Mm -hmm. So some we have the setup. We also have a kit and a video that this kit is a marking kit. So we get we get the picture of their home and, and oftentimes customers, we are advertising our website shows what the decks look like. Oftentimes customers just order a deck. They may want our popular size which is a 12 or 16 porch. They know what the price is, we give them a schedule date and they usually have to go to work because we're working for people like us, working class folk. So we'll send them a kit out. It has yellow flags that mark the corners and blue flags that mark the steps. And then we have what we call premium upgrades and personalized options, which is where they take a basic square deck and the angle corners get skirting. Uh, very, we have different things to upgrade their deck. And that would be a white flag and we write that in there. So there's a video, it takes one minute video. They go on there, it shows it comes to the kit, comes with a tape measure. So they can go out, measure it off, mark their deck off, make sure they get it where they want it. They go to work that morning, the crew shows up, they look at the flags and the contract and then the rendering. That's three times they have to make sure they all match up. They match up, they build the deck. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> it's on that afternoon and it's done. It's that's, done. That yeah. is absolutely yeah, that's fantastic. Great. That's oh great. my I'm, gosh. I'm, I don't I think I'd have to stay home from work just to watch, watch. it that day. <laughs> but you know, when I built decks 
and I've, I've put my hands on about 2,000 of them. That's certainly my passion. I would rather be out putting decks together than anything else. It was not unusual to have somebody come out and sit in a chair and watch us. And, and yeah. I always, you know, I was, you know, got a little, a little prideful about that. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah, and you I, should be proud should of be. that. That's great. awesome. Yeah, it's a great concept, and uh, it's obviously you're doing it does pretty well, and and uh, I'm sure that your clients are all pretty happy because the decks look, porches look amazing on there. That you can do that so quickly, and and they look so great, and it, the quality is so high. So that's uh, definitely a neat product, neat service. Thank you. So yeah, you're welcome. And, is there anything else before we wrap up that you might want to uh, tell our listeners about your company or about the porches or decks that you build? The only thing I have to add about Ready Decks is that although we did originally uh, cater to the manufactured home industry and we still take care of those customers the same way we always have, we have in the last six years really branched out to conventional homes. We can do the same quality or similar quality work as, as, as your high-end contractors, generally for a good bit less and, and uh, generally a whole lot quicker, less painlessly. We'd also good. like to let our listeners know how they can get in contact with you. And then what areas do you serve? So, you know, we don't have somebody from, you know, uh, Massachusetts from uh, call <laughs> okay. you unless you're in Massachusetts. <laughs> Currently, Ready Decks has eight locations uh, serving all of Louisiana except for the New Orleans area, the majority of Mississippi, uh, again except for the very the very coastal areas, uh, Arkansas, and East Texas, uh, especially and in including the greater Houston area. Mm. You can reach us at one eight six six thirty two decks or go to our website, readydex.com, and you can find your local office there. Or just call our home office, again, 866-32-DEX, and we will put you in contact with the right person. Well, Great. fantastic. And you also, you also have franchise opportunities. We do have franchise opportunities, and we are seeking people who are passionate about this business, who are passionate about creating good jobs. It's one thing that we pride ourselves in. And, you know, Ready is not a get-rich business. It's a good, solid business to be in. You can start off small and grow from there. Uh, we have opportunities to the East Coast. And, well, pretty much everywhere that I didn't list, we have opportunities available. Great. Oh, well, that's sure awesome. That we let people know. We sure will. Well, we are very honored that you joined us today, Brad, on our podcast. And I know I learned a lot from what you said. And um, thank you for making the world a better place by building porches and decks and wheelchair ramps. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, you have a, a great website and, and a, a great go-to place. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we love for I visit your website often and get ideas. Oh, great. Thank Thanks. you so Thanks. much. We appreciate that. We love porches. Very good. Very good. Thanks a lot, Brad. Thank you. Take care. This podcast is brought to you by PorchIdeas.com, where you can find thousands of pictures and ideas to help you design, build, and decorate your porch or screen porch. If you enjoyed our podcast, we welcome you to subscribe and to leave us a review. We'll see you on the porch. You have been listening to the Porch Ideas Network. We invite you to subscribe to our podcast for innovative and creative ideas for your porch and yard.